Hello, I'm Mark, and this is In the Round on Armature Boss Tutorial Series, Part 3, Making the Armature. The purpose of an armature is to support your clay, which, in its plastic state, will slump under its own weight. There are many different types of armatures. The simplest are just a few pieces of scrap wood screwed together. The most complex are 3D printed or CNC routed from digital models or 3D scans to fit perfectly beneath the sculptural surface of the finished piece. Regardless of complexity, the two most important features of all armatures are that they are strong enough to support the material and that they don't impinge on the surface of the sculpture. If you're using water-based clay, there are two additional considerations. First, you can't use an armature that's too rigid or too near to the surface of the sculpture because it can cause the clay to crack as it dries and shrinks. Second, you have to be able to remove the sculpture from the armature without destroying it so that it can be hollowed out, reassembled, and fired. The three most common bust armatures are a dowel with paper or aluminum foil balled up and taped onto it, a few lengths of angled pipe, and the armature wire egg beater. We will be using the last of these, which I prefer for a number of reasons. First, the density of clay required provides better sculptural feedback than squishy light or loose paper and foil cores, while at the same time helping to retain moisture so you can take your time with the sculpt. Second, and more importantly, the flexible armature wire allows you to pose your bust after establishing the primary masses and the layout of the features. This makes maintaining symmetry along the midline much easier and is particularly useful for likenesses. For this style of armature, you will need a piece of plywood for the base, at least a half an inch thick, preferably more, slats to support the base, prevent it from warping, and allow you to get your fingers under it so that you can pick it up. Busts can get very, very heavy, particularly when using this kind of armature. A six to eight inch length of three quarter inch pipe and matching flange. Three sixteenth inch armature wire. Make sure that it is armature wire. Other types won't do. Galvanized steel wire for binding. Wood screws. Additionally, You'll need a drill and a driver, or just a drill with a driver bit, a pair of wire cutters, a tape measure, and a pencil or a pen. First, find the center point of your base. Position your flange and mark its location. Mark where the slats will go. Pre-drill your holes. Drive in your screws. Screw in the pipe. Cut two 36 inch lengths of your armature wire. It's better that these be too long than too short. You can always trim back. Bend them first in half loosely and shape them into an egg beater. They don't need to be identical, but they should be relatively close. And they shouldn't be too large because you don't want your armature to stick out of the side of the bust. Heads are significantly narrower than most people assume. Once you have the two sides of your egg beater. You're going to need to bind it up at the neck and at the crown. Make a loop, twist off to get it started. Try to avoid sharp 
prongs, those can cause problems later. And then start wrapping. And as we come to the end, I'm going to endeavor to stick that trailing end down into the center. And there you have your egg beater. The next step is to put it into your pipe and bind it to the pipe. I'm going to go through, twist off, Start by wrapping the armature wire itself, and then bring it down into the threads of the pipe, and then back up around the wire itself, and then back down into the threads of the pipe. You can see it's secure now, and the rest will just be reinforce. And there it is, your armature. Simple to make, inexpensive, and reusable. Join me next time for part four, in which we'll be loading the initial clay onto the armature and building up the blank head using primary measurements.